Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast. My name is John Magi, and I will be your host. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about Royal Caribbean's new approach to concierge-level service called Royal Suite Class. I had to look at my notes to see what it was called. I'm joined at the panel. I'm joined at the table by our panel of experts, agent consultant for Dreams Unlimited Travel, Tracy Heinrichs. Hi, everyone. Client Services Manager for Dreams Unlimited Travel, Kevin Close. Hello. And back in our production facility, we have our associate producer, Oliver Green. Hello. Again, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, Very excited to talk to you about uh, Royal Caribbean's new uh, Royal Suite Class service uh, for a couple reasons. First of all, most of us in this room had a chance to experience one part of this service on Podcast Crew 6.0. All of us except for Oliver. Mm, Poor Oliver. Sorry, Ollie. Poor me. Poor me. <laughs> Oliver, it was yeah. the best thing ever. It really was. You missed out. <laughs> um, but also because I'm really excited that Royal Caribbean is stepping up their game for sweet guests. Um, Tracy's got a whole bunch of information. We're going to talk about all the stuff you get and all the amenities. But the fact that they are really focusing on sweet guests and giving them that additional service, uh, from my experience, it was a great great thing for them to do for us. So uh, excited to talk about it, excited to get started. Let me just start with a little bit of background. Uh, it is called the Royal Suite Class, and it has three tiers, mm-hmm. C, uh, Star, Sky, and C, um, and it's exclusive access to lounges, dining venues, and you get special attentive service and additional stateroom amenities. So Tracy's going to go through the different classes for us, talk about amenities, talk about how you can go about getting this, and then we're going to share a little bit of our experience. So take it away, Tracy. All right. So the first thing to say is that this is not fleet-wide. Um, this is on the Oasis-class ships, and it's also on the Quantum-class ships. So this is the Harmony, the Allure, the Oasis, um, Anthem will have these, and then also the Ovation, which we don't really see a lot of it, it's more um, Asian, Asian itinerary, so we don't see that a lot. But So it's really, for, for the most part for us, we're talking about four ships, Harmony, Allure, Oasis, and Anthem. Um, these classes, they came out last year, and um, I think it was, so it's a relatively new thing for Royal Caribbean. And um, C-Class is the, I don't know, the lowest tier of the three tiers. And this is basically your junior suites. So before, junior suites really didn't get any amenities. They've brought them up and included them in this C class. So the first, and at first, what I'm going to do first is talk about a little bit about the types of staterooms included, and then we'll go on to talk about the amenities. So the C class would be your junior suites. This could be a family connected junior suite or a family junior suite, a spa. Basically, anything with the word junior suite in it is included in C class. Um, The next level up is Sky class. These are more of your uh, your grand suite, uh, your owner suites are in here. The one bedroom aqua theater suite is included in this class, as is the crown loft suite. Um, so, I guess maybe for lack of a better word, entry level suites. I don't know. Although any of these suites would be more than entry level for most people. Um, And then the highest tier is the star class. So the star class, these are the more exclusive suites on the ships. So this would be your royal loft suite, your owner's loft suite, um, four bedroom family suite. That's really hard to come by. Um, But there is one available. Grand loft suite, sky loft suite, and then the two bedroom aqua theater suite is included in that class as well. So once you um, have done all the classes... The next is, what are you getting for these classes? That's that's the big question. And forgive me, I am kind of looking at my notes a little bit just because there's so much information. There is a lot I want to make sure I'm trying to do it's it in a way tremendous. that's condensing it, but at the same time not missing anything. Um, so the first thing is in the C class. So we talked about the fact that these are your junior suites. Basically in here, what you're getting is access to Coastal Kitchen, which is the exclusive suite Um, restaurant dining room I guess would be more appropriate Um, you get access to that dining room at dinner only with reservations Um, so it's before junior suites didn't really get anything so it is an an upgrade Um, and then they also advertise the fact that you're getting um, a luxury pillow top mattress Ooh, they give you a mattress oh yeah before they slept on bricks (laughs) and also the special bath amenities pronunciation Kevin help me La Satane is that how they're? Sure. Yeah. You know what it is. You, I call it Lacatane, but Lacatane. I, yeah. 
Right. So I could be wrong. Whatever you're calling it, that's the products. And I got to tell you, we experienced them this time on this first. I've never used the products before. I've since bought the products, so it did work. I like them. So the C class, as I said, is pretty basic. What you're getting included, but there are there is the perk of the coastal kitchen. Again, I think the I think the big takeaway from this is that these are rooms that are much less expensive, considerably than, less right, than yeah. these other suites we're going to mention. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about a little bit more than say a uh, deluxe ocean view stateroom. I would With call balcony. it a stateroom and a half. Right. It's a and the, a junior suite. Most people are booking that for the extra space that it gives them over right. um, a balcony or a veranda Correct. stateroom. You're this would the amenities included in this wouldn't make you increase the price. Let's say that. Here's the deal. It's a bigger balcony stateroom. Right. Right. But exactly. however, these are great things to be added to that. To oh that yeah. Class. Anything of, they uh, add to it yeah. and not yeah, take yeah, away absolutely. is a good thing. I agree. So then the next class is a Sky Class. This is when, and this Sky Class is kind of where Royal Suites were and kind of our fleet wide. This is kind of where the service level was before. And I think the only thing that's really been added to this, the ships now have Coastal Kitchen, so that's a nice touch. I believe now you're getting internet, and you guys can attest to this before you didn't before. Correct. Um, yeah. So you're getting the high speed boom internet included for free, unlimited. And it worked really well. Yeah. Depending on the sailing and depending on certain promotions, you might get the basic internet included and you could upgrade. Right. But the fact that you got the free boom was incredible. This is the class where John and I usually book. Right. Exactly. We and this really is the class like, that Royal Caribbean's had for a long. This is kind of has been. Right. We really like the owner suite. Right. The layout works for us, the space works for us. Um, coastal kitchen access here as well, but now it's all day. And they're a lot, a lot more flexible with you as to whether you have reservations or don't when you're in, once you're in sky and yeah. higher. Um, uh, what I really like to do is once you get through with all this, I'd really like to talk a lot about coastal kitchen. Oh, for sure. In my opinion, Believe this is me. really a yeah. huge that was a addition plus. to, um, um the concierge Caribbean. service still, which is, is what this level of service was offering before, as we said, um, the suite lounge access, which is. It's now um, the suite lounge. I know it's different on different ships, but it's all part of where Coastal Kitchen is. You've got the concierge up there. And it used to be on some of the ships, it was the Crown and Anchor Lounge. Yeah. Or the Viking Crown. Viking Crown Lounge. Lounge where they converted it to this space. It's a combination of those words. Exactly. (laughs) Any given order. That's right. And then it says, you know, things like exclusive signature activities. It's very vague. Um, but you do have exclusive suites beach access. So there is an exclusive beach for suites guests. On, we were in Labadee for this cruise, and it was Barefoot Beach. Um, so that was definitely a perk that we enjoyed as well. Um, the Again, the bath amenities. You do get a one-day thermal room access. You, is that something you've done? I just paid for rooms. the whole week. Did you? Okay. So you got a week pass. They probably did as they probably... I uh, think they did. They might have still rated it. One day, yeah. yeah. Um, you also get um, specialty bottled water. Do you have specialty bottled water? We did. Yeah. We did. It was delicious. <laughs> it was very special. That special bottle water. And you we also, watched I them see, dipping, had a pillow top mattress. <laughs> we watched them dip the bucket in the ocean and bring it out. <laughs> Wonderful. Delicious. And so, yeah, we also got a mattress. I was very appreciative of that. We very appreciative of the mattress. I love the mattress. So you can see that, just again, that was more typical. So then let we me, get to, Before yeah. you go to the next one, let me also point out, too, we made fun of the mattress thing. Uh, something they don't say here is we actually were offered a pillow menu. We asked for more pin- pillows. Mm-hmm. We had well, ours well done. We did. <laughs> Slightly <laughs> rare on the inside. So, you know, it, we make fun of that, but the bedding is, I thought the bedding was fantastic. Absolutely. I think the sheets are better than I remember them too. Yeah, yes. so. We had a yeah. choice of foam, feather, mm-hmm. combination. And it gets to the point where in. you think, okay, this is silly. But it's still, it's a nice perk for the amount of money you're spending. Right. It's nice to have that little bit of extra. Um, and then we get to star class. So star class is new. How smug she I know. I was so, and I'll explain why in a minute. <sighs> but star class is. At length. Yes, she'll explain she will. why. I will, in detail. With PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> and interpretive dance. Um, but star class is kind of the new level of service. And this is why, this is really the reason why they, you know, they've come out with this. So they've included more everything you get inside a sky class and more so now you get what's called a royal genie and i'll talk a little bit more about my experience with that later um and what that means uh complimentary specialty dining so all of the the add-on restaurants were included at star class um ultimate beverage package was included for everybody in our stateroom so that was a real nice perk as well that was go to any bar 
any yes. place you wanted at dinner. Right. Show them your card, and you got any and drink you wanted. And it included Starbucks. Yeah. Um, so we were able to get Starbucks beverages included as well. Um, it just didn't include the little food that they sell at Starbucks, but it did include the beverages. Um, you know, fancy linens on the bed. Again, fancier mattress. Um, we did have the, all the same things that the other had. Complimentary daily gratuities. Our gratuities were included in the stateroom cost as well. This was not the gratuities for our Royal Genie, and I'll discuss that a little bit more later as well. But this is your your typical, your your dining room weight team and, and this is, your stateroom This attendant. is hundreds of dollars. Yes. This is not... Especially because these are bigger rooms. Exactly. exactly. So they usually have more people in them. And, you know, there was an, an espresso coffee maker in the room. There was also something called handcrafted in-suite cocktails. So somebody would come <laughs> around with um, basically a special menu... For this class of sweets, and it was a, there were specialty drinks that we could order. They'd come around three or four o'clock in the afternoon. We were there for it. Oh, you were there that day, weren't you? We were. So let's. All right, let's. And there was a gender fluid person <laughs> who came in and made drinks. Let's have a little. We have to have a little bit of background, right? This was Podcast Crew Six Point Kevin and I had our usual owner suite. <laughs> Very happy with the service. We're going to talk about the stuff that we got, which we loved. Um, Tracy happened to book. What was the room we booked? I booked a two-bedroom Aqua Theater suite. And the reason I did that was we had my parents with us and my husband's mom. So my parents and my mother-in-law. And both of our mothers had special birthdays last year. So we decided for their birthdays, we would take them on podcast cruise, but we would splurge. So we splurged for the two-bedroom Aqua Theater suite. The funny thing is this new suite class came out after we booked. So we didn't book because of this. It just ended up being a benefit. And being five adults, wanting to give them this special experience, it really worked out in our favor. For the price you paid and what you got, it was a bargain and a half. It was. Tremendous. Absolutely. The only downside of this Aqua (laughs) Theater Suite. (laughs) It was at the end of the earth. (laughs) It was. I'm not even sure it was on our ship. (laughs) It might have been on land. Did you ever see the scene from The Shining where the hallway just keeps getting longer? Yep. This was as far as you could go and i thought to myself if i got here every day there's a very good chance i would not see any other part of the show i thought the thing you were going to say is the worst part about this is that tracy had it and we didn't right there was that there was a great deal of bragging on this ship there was there's a great deal of showing off on this ship so we had a chance to go when the specialty cocktail lady came around (laughs) i'm not sure that's right (laughs) she was lovely I yes, sure he was. They, they, they were lovely. They were, yes, lovely. They were lovely. <laughs> very lovely. But um, we did not partake in the cocktails. Kevin and I don't drink. But this is a really cool service. Absolutely. It feels very elegant. You're sitting yes. in your stateroom. They come by and they offer you special drinks you can't get anywhere else, apparently, on it's the true. ship. She handcrafts them. She pours the bottle herself. As opposed to making them with her feet. Exactly. (laughs) And she brings them in the room and serves them to you. So this is a really cool. And what I thought was funny is you like planned your days. to be. We did. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. We were very aware of, well, if we leave now, because, and also our stateroom was very far. So there was a lot of planning. (laughs) You You have have sustenance (laughs) to get to the other part of the ship. So we missed it a couple days and I was like, okay, no, we have to plan now. So we have to be here. This is only valuable. If you're in your stateroom at that point, absolutely, they don't come absolutely. looking for you. This is not a reason to book one of these guys. Let's say that. It's not. Uh, it's but like I, let me say Star a couple Wars other things stuff. that yeah, were included, the, though. Right, um, complimentary in-suite movies. That was a nice perk. Um, the suite we were in had a very large screen in the living room, so we could watch a movie all together. And each of the bedrooms had a, a TV as well. So all of the movies that you normally buy, and I think they range from 12 to $14, um, were included. So we've talked about this before in the show. Sometimes you just are sitting in the stateroom watching a movie. And these were all really recent, close to first run movies. Um, so that was included. So there was some value there. There was a video game system in the, in the suite as well. Uh, we never did quite figure out where the games were, but it was there. Um, our Again, not the audience. Right. <laughs> again, our, our mini bar in the fridge, or in, I'm sorry, in the stateroom was stocked every day so they kept us stocked with soda and and water as we wanted and beer and and things so that was all stocked and complimentary as well we walked into her room and she had one whole shelf of diet coke i did <laughs> i did they brought like just i will say this water. i will say this i know it's not listed in our amenities but ours was as well mm-hmm. ours yeah. was complimentary sodas and yeah. water and stuff so that was a nice perk mm-hmm. for us that we weren't expecting 
So I had uh, to, complimentary laundry service. Right, that's Talk true. Talk about a huge savings yeah. on a cruise. What was really funny is my mom, the day before we went home, she had all of her laundry done so that it was done when she got home. <laughs> <laughs> I would have done the exact same thing. Yeah. We have a friend so, who went to a hotel in a different country because yeah. laundry was included. We will not mention any names, but Matt, we do have Matt a friend, Lawrence. Matt. Matt Lawrence from Australia. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that was an amazing service because I always, when I get on board, I, I often pay for um, pressing, like not necessarily dry cleaning, but to have my clothes pressed. Right, for the first sort of dress-up yep. night. Whatever exactly. So I yeah. had sent a bunch of stuff out to be pressed early on, and our laundry service throughout the whole week was just included. Um, so these were really nice. These are perks. fantastic This perks. really made a cruise all-inclusive. And especially when we were five adults, we were treating our parents. We loved the fact that we could just tell them, that's your card. Go do what you want. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, one of the things we hear, um, Disney's expensive. Yes. Royal Caribbean is less expensive, but there's all these charges. I want, yeah, it's true. And we felt like in this kind of alleviated that for us. And it gave us the opportunity to give them exactly what we wanted to. We wanted this to be very special for them. And so we wanted them to know that they could order anything they wanted, show that little card. And honestly, when you show the card, it's, it's a different color. It mm-hmm. says Star Class. They loved how they felt with it. Glows. It. Exactly. Exactly. The angels sing. Okay, there's one so, thing we haven't talked about. Oh, we will. No, I'm getting there. Don't, don't. You're talking Come about on. Genie? Spoil alert. Shh, 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 shh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, we will. I'm going to get bossy, there. She's isn't she? So, what are you getting so, to? Before you get to what that. What if it's not the thing I'm talking about? I know it's the thing you're talking about. <laughs> Go ahead. Before we get to that, yep. I want to do Coastal Kitchen for a little bit. Yes, let's talk about Coastal Kitchen. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't bring any pictures. I wish I would have brought pictures. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> but Coastal Kitchen, Go ahead. talk about what it is exactly, and we'll talk about it. So experience. Coastal Kitchen is, a, I think, a dining room. It's not really a restaurant. It's more of a small dining room that's only for sweet guests. So we had mentioned that those in junior suites can book dinner here, reservation only. Um, But the other suites could really, I mean, you should plan ahead, and we did book ahead for our dinners. This replaced the main dining room for us. For us as well, too. Absolutely. And to have a place where it was still main dining room-ish, but better quality food, it was a lot quieter. Again, I've talked about the reason for this trip, so the fact that we could sit with our parents and really just have conversation and feel like you were having a nice dinner together without all the chaos and noise of a main dining room. Um, this was a big park, and this might be the reason alone. I've talked a lot of t- a lot on the show, my poor husband, about how frugal he is. We left this ship with him saying, this is kind of how I want to cruise. We, and um, Coastal Kitchen is a big reason for that. One of the things they do on other ships, sweet guests uh, have an option of dining in one of the specialty restaurants for breakfast. Mm-hmm. Usually it's Chops, the steakhouse. And what that means is you don't have to go to the main dining room or the buffet for breakfast. You can go to... Uh, the Chops restaurant, and there's a uh, table service. People, you know, you order off a menu and they bring it to you. I thought Coastal Kitchen was the best change that yes. I've seen in years and years and years. Because we could go there for breakfast. We could yes. go there we for could, lunch. Yep, and you could go and have your sit-down lunch. It was three mm-hmm. meals a day served. Let's talk uh, about uh, reservations. Now, they do say for our, our level we should have made reservations. On two occasions, we started to eat somewhere else. And the experience was not what we were looking for. And we actually went into Coastal Kitchen, talked to the person at the front desk and said, listen, I'm really sorry, but there's eight of us. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, sure. Come on in. Sit down. No One problem. of the nice things sweet guests They're are wonderful. allowed to do is sweet guests are allowed to bring other people who are not staying in suites to Coastal Kitchen. You Except have to- for Junior Suite. Right. But suite. you have to be the guest of someone who is staying in a suite. And if you're doing that, they do ask that you make reservations in right. advance so that they know that someone is coming. And I have a feeling that's just a space issue. Yeah. Right. And it is because it is a fairly small space. I would guess there's um, probably 15 or 18 tables. Yeah. But it was really a plus for us. We just loved that experience. Um, I got to tell you, I think it was the best food we had. It was absolutely my uh, favorite. We place usually to eat. love the specialty restaurants even better than the specialty restaurants. I agree. We thought. Uh, nice part, nice thing about it was they did change the menu during the cruise, so it wasn't it was the same food every night. Two nights, three nights, and two nights. So Coastal Kitchen menus. also has they divide their menu into classic, and I don't remember what the other word mm-hmm. was. One was a little more um, 
I don't, for lack of a better word, exotic. There were classic things, steak, uh, grill, uh, grilled chicken, a fish dish. And then there were things that were a little more... Just more unique, more, you know, more specialty. That was kind of the chef's specials right. for that menu. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. And then there were the things that were offered every night, the, the more standard fare. I don't want to give the idea that this was unusual food. No. But it was more like a chef special. I ate there, and we've talked about how, you know, how I'm pretty vanilla in my flavor, in my, you know, what I prefer. But you could get but just I, basic. You could. And I found that I... I really enjoyed this experience. I Me really too. can't talk enough about how much I enjoyed this experience. And, to, and the, you mentioned that the concierge lounge is attached to Coastal Kitchen, right. separated by a bar. But even the food we went one night for hors d'oeuvres, even the hors d'oeuvres were really good. Yeah. They had really good chicken wings. Yeah, it was awesome. So the whole, I think the whole thing really elevates right. that experience to a new level. We really enjoyed concierge level on Disney. In my opinion, the addition of the Coastal Kitchen pushes this above Disney's concierge service. Now, there's also a concierge. Um, there, the concierge was in the concierge lounge. But there's also, if you're a Diamond member, there's a Diamond lounge. Yeah. That's separate from the suite lounge. Correct. So I, I, we, I've talked a lot about when I cruise, and I'm often in insides. You know, you all saw my pictures from the celebrity cruise of where I slept. So this was a big departure from the norm for us. This is not what we do. This is the first time I've ever been in a suite on Royal Caribbean. It's the first time I've been in ours. Well, except for (laughs) visiting. (laughs) Yeah, I don't really like the fact that Tracy had a better experience than us. It really ruined my cruise. I know. And I have to say that was probably the best part of the whole cruise for me (laughs) was that I was in the best suite for once. (laughs) Tell them about the boarding process. Okay, so yeah. This is what I was going to talk about. Yeah. So this is one of the perks as well. So let's, I have to back it up a little bit just to qualify that and say uh, about four to six weeks before we did get an email from Royal Caribbean from the suite class, just a questionnaire asking us general questions. What do you like? Tell us a little bit about the party, that kind of stuff. It was very general. It was also a little, I don't know. It was a little artsy fartsy for me. So some of the questions were, if you could have dinner with anybody, who would you have dinner with? So some of the questions were like that. (laughs) It was like living or dead. (laughs) Right. So, you know, but there were some questions. So we filled it out. And probably about two weeks before we were contacted by our Royal Genie. So you hear Royal Genie and you think, okay, what is this? Is this just a concierge? I think curly toed shoes. Right. There was no curly toed shoes. He was very, very well dressed. He was very dapper. Um, And our... Our Royal Genie was Alan, and he has been a concierge with Royal Caribbean for a number of years. And so what they did, they took, I'm, from what I guess, most of them came internally, and they were sent to, like, the butler school of butlering. <laughs> as you do. Think yeah, Don't as help you her. Do. Don't help her. Let her go. <laughs> <laughs> so, Don't but they did her. get special training for this. They went, to, you know, to the Butler Academy of Butlering. <laughs> Massachusetts Institute of Institute of Butler. Exactly. I can't say it. So you know, Devry Tech of Butler. Could have been an online course. You never know. Yeah. So anyway, they are very they are specially trained and they they are definitely elevated over a concierge level of service and it's more in the individual. So we came to find out later that he actually had four staterooms that he was taking care of for the cruise. None of this is the interesting part. Get to the interesting part. We're getting to the interesting part. So two weeks before, we got an email from him, and this is when our planning started. So when you're booking a cruise, you know, you might be booking specialty dining and shows in advance and all of that. We didn't do any of that until two weeks before when we heard from Alan. So at this point, he asked us what time we were arriving. And he gave us his personal cell phone number. And at that point, you also get a special app. And this app, once you download it, you can actually text back and communicate back and forth with your genie for a couple weeks before the cruise and for a week or two after just to stay in touch and to do your planning. Tracy got a friend out of it. They call the app rubbing his lamp. (laughs) (laughs) It's not called that. (laughs) Anyway. They should have called it that. They should have. Oh, what an opportunity they missed. (laughs) Um, anyways, it's so hard to stay on top. Yeah, it yeah. is. Welcome to my job. I um, know. So I'm still thinking about going to butlering school. So this. what happens then is that you plan your arrival. So he wants to know what time you're arriving so he can greet you. So we pulled up by car and there's a special area where sweet guests pull up. And if, if you know, there's all kinds of people there 
trying to wave you over and you go here, you go there. And it's like, oh, we're star class. You just say, you're, and they actually give you a piece of paper that prints out that says star class that you could show people. I thought that was a little weird. So you don't have to interact so with the people at the port. <laughs> <laughs> so you pull up to the star class area and there's luggage handlers there, but there was also, um, I think she was more of a port employee, um, maybe from the Royal, from Royal Caribbean, but she kind of checked off our name. She knew we were here. She made contact with Alan, but Alan also knew that we were coming because we had been, I had been texting him and we had called that morning to, he knew when we were arriving. So they, this is where the experience gets very different and you know, this is not a typical cruise. So now we don't give our bags to the regular porters and they don't go off. Our bags stay with us. So there's a porter assigned to us at that point. He takes our bags and he walks through with us. Our genie has come down to meet us. And now we're being escorted through. And we're talking about all of your bags, all of your yes. luggage, not just your right. carry-on stuff, not just your purse right. and that thing. You're talking about the stuff you normally would check on an airplane or give to a porter. That's right. Uh, that's incredible. Yeah. So our bags. You never leave your side. Yeah. And so now we're escorted through. We're escorted through security. There's a special security area for us to go to. There was a special check-in area where we got all of our cards and all of that was handled. And then a different person comes and gets the bags and we don't see them for a little bit um, because he has to go through a different area because those bags have to be scanned still, of course. So that's taken care of behind the scenes. And as it's time to board the ship, then keep in mind, if you've boarded a ship, you're all in line, you've done everything, you're waiting for your turn to board. Well, now there's a guy coming through saying, excuse me, excuse me, to the right, to the right, as he's escorting the five of us past everybody. And it's awkward like i really hope they do something with that because as guests that was awkward i think as canadians that was maybe awkward. maybe that's what <laughs> the americans would have loved every minute of it so however all, do you know what tracy told me on the ship she was very upset that she did not pass john and i, I so was, she that was asked, the part i was getting to <laughs> she asked her genie if she could go around that again. was the part i was getting so we're going by and part of me is thinking oh god please don't let me see our people please because i keep them this is the podcast cruise i have booked a lot of these people so now i'm telling them to move so i can walk by them this this feels like a different, so I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm looking, I'm like, darn, there's no John, there's no Kevin, there's no Pete, there's nobody to push aside as I go walking by. And then I'm like, can we do that again? Like, I didn't see anybody. Except right at the end, I saw our Royal Caribbean rep, Michael Arts. He was right at the end. He's like, oh, Chase. And it's like, yeah, sorry, I got to go. I can't talk to you. It's too important. My genie walks fast. Yeah. So we got escorted right through. And at that point, there's the guy waiting with our luggage. Um, so they took the luggage up with us. We were taken right to our, right to our suite, um, with our genie. I you still got there that. after we got to our room only cause you had a three mile walk. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, um, so he take, he was calling ahead to our stateroom attendant. Our suite was ready. And keep in mind, this is now, we arrived at the port at 1030. So this is 11 o'clock and we're in our suite with our luggage. All right. So that to Most me... Most people weren't even allowed on the ship yet. That was a really big perk to yeah. me. That whole embarkation part, because it's not smooth. And I know you guys had talked about it on the other show. There were some issues. It's not smooth with a lot of cruise lines. Some do it better than others. But that whole thing, and the fact that my luggage was there, we were already... Nothing was really open on the ship yet, but we could start unpacking. This is the reason why Kevin and I always go on the ship later. Yeah. Because we want to avoid all of that mess in the beginning and just walk we lose on. a couple of hours of right. onboard time, right? But it smooths that process out. Right. But if I could deal. do that, if I could just walk in and be in front of everybody and be on <laughs> right. the ship, I would do it all the time. You would not have that Canadian guilt, would you? <laughs> I would not have the Canadian guilt. <laughs> we were like literally, like, like, like we were mumbling to each other, "Don't make eye contact, don't make eye contact, nobody look." So then we get on the ship, and if our... I have a genie, though, I want her to be Barbara Eden. <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> or be at out. least dressed like Barbara Eden. <laughs> yeah. I did not want to see Alan in Barbara Eden's dress. No, I'm good. Um, but I'm going to stop calling him my genie and call him Alan because he was really... Alan always just stood out of their sight. Line. Right. I, was... The rest of the world could see him. It was kind of like, you know, the queen's assistant. <laughs> which I was just sort of out of the shot. Step back. Right. So anyways, we got to our suite and he walked through everything with us. Exactly what we were getting included, how it was all going to work for us. Um, how he was going to be there to help us. We went through our schedule. He had a p copy of our schedule that we had pre-planned. Um, 
so everything was was Imagine our schedule. Set. We're gonna be I, resting. Well, this is my casino. <laughs> How much of our schedule would be devoted to his, cheese? <laughs> his first draft of my schedule was like, hey, my, he's like, I email, okay, Alan, like we're not that kind of cruiser. We're not doing all of that. We're not gonna. <laughs> Could even, we take well, out napkin folding? Are, I don't care. I don't want it. You know. So ours was pretty basic. I don't think we worked him too hard. Um, and there. We had asked him at that point, and I'd asked in advance. Uh, my dad loves to know how things work, and he, they've cruised a few times. But So I knew he would love a behind-the-scenes bridge tour, maybe like a, a tour of the galley and stuff like that. So he had arranged stuff like that. Um, we were doing work stuff, but my family and Chris got to do it a little bit later in the week. So that was all included as well. Um, and so then we, had the, we met our stateroom attendant. And again, ahead of time, we told them what we wanted in the fridge, and it was all there for us. And so the... This was, was the, the gender whole... fluid cocktail person there when you got there? No, that was later in the day. Later in the day. So this was really our first glimpse of this is not an average week for us, and this is going to be really cool. And it was. So at, throughout the week, I'm not going to go through every day, but Alan would do things like we, had, we did have show uh, reservations for certain nights. Um, and normally we're not big show people, but again, because of, of having family, we did more than we normally would. So he would go early. We would arrange he, every night at dinner. He would find us wherever we were and we would just kind of touch base if we hadn't during the day and just make sure that we were still on it. He would tell us where to meet him. He would go to the show early and he'd have reserved like banners. We saw him one night laying across chairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he, always first or second, like always Best, right seats, front, best yeah. seats in the house. We did it for the ice show. We did it for the main theater. The comedy club, that was a big one for us. We'd never gotten to go to the comedy club because we're not planners. We don't plan ahead. And then it would be busy. And there's you'd look at the lines like, yeah, I'm not waiting. Right. I'm so we that. never got to do comedy club. So, you know, you got to go in a special inter- entrance and he had special seats for us. Um, so he would wait. He would hold the seats for us. We could come in five or ten minutes before the show started and then just sit down. And again, the place is full. So you're like, okay, don't make eye contact with me. Just keep walking. <laughs> and then I'd have clients messaging me on Facebook. I see you. I saw you just walking in. <laughs> and so this was one of the things that he would do. This was one of the perks. Um, at one point during the week, I was trying to get something shopping-wise, and he was helping. I have a feeling other people were asking him to do a lot more. My only issue with the whole thing was we didn't know what to ask for. Mm. It would have been nice to have an idea of some of the things that he could have I mean, they mentioned done. things in the list like special celebrations, for right. personal events and things like that. We've actually, who knows, you know? Right. We've been on a cruise where we had a butler and, you know, I think my request was Diet Coke. Yeah. So it wasn't and like... And that was kind of us. Yeah. You know, my biggest thing for him going into this and, and all it was that, first of all, my our parents are the priority. I'm working... Chris is self-sufficient. Make sure our parents get what they want. We really want to do these tours. You know, I really want my dad to be able to experience these behind-the-scenes things. So we were pretty low-key. Um, partway through the week, all of a sudden we came back to the state room one evening, and there were personalized gifts for all of us. And these were nice gifts. These were, um, and it was Right, it wasn't bit, like he went to the logo store and got everybody no, there a was visor. Nothing, yeah, there was right. no Royal Caribbean hats or keychains here. Right. These were, and these were things that... You could tell it was a little, probably like day four or five. So he'd kind of gotten to know each of us. So like there were things I could just tell you mine, for example, was a very fancy pen. And because I was working on this cruise and he'd often seen me working, to me that was, yeah, you know. that's really cool. And he had given an, a nice bag to our, to our moms, but different ones. And they really fit their personality. So it was like he had paid attention during the week. Um, and my dad, again. Um, I had told him early on that Chris likes um, Moscow Mule as his gift, gift of choice. So there were beautiful copper mugs for Chris. So this was a nice touch that we weren't expecting for sure. So these were all things that he did for us. And like I said, I really think we could have asked him to do a lot more. We didn't know what to ask for. And I don't know that I would have done it any differently anyway. Did you make your specialty dining in advance or was that done on that the fly? Was, I didn't have to do that in advance. At two weeks before... He, whatever we wanted, he asked. There were some changes we had made during the week. And the great thing was, like, I just called Chops myself and said I need to make that time. Oh, yes, of course. Because they see your room number come up, right? And that was the other thing. We talked about the specialty dining being included. When we went to Chops, not only is the specialty dining included, but so are the upcharges. So, (laughs) you know. That's the story. Oh, my God. So the first night we go, and they kind of trip over you a little bit when they know you're star class. Because 
you not only have specialty dining for free, the upcharges are free. So they're telling us all about these, you know, the fancy porterhouse and the lobster. So the first night there's five of us and my dad's having a surf and turf, but he has like a 12 ounce porterhouse and he has a main lobster. I mean, this is like a, you know, hundred dollars in upcharges and he's sitting there. He's had four appetizers, you know, so we all had lobsters that night. So they're coming out with it. And there's three servers coming out, and there's this presentation almost of our food, and other tables are. But it was really, it was kind and of. And none cool. of us got our food. Yeah. Because yeah. all that three waiters. Oh, you guys weren't in All this three night. waiters were waiting on your table. Yeah. We went to Chops a different night, too. So the night that you guys were there. Um, but this was the first night that we had gone. So we all, like, so there's value in that. If you're going to go to specialty restaurants, you have to think, I know Chops, I think, was $45 a yeah, person. The price has gone So up, you think yeah. five of us. That was value. That yeah. was over two. And that was without the lobster and the porterhouse steaks, you know? Just a bar bill. Yes. And I, and we're, none of us are drinkers. They right. Neither am I. It wouldn't, I would not get my money's but worth out of that. But if able, you, yeah, it's and like that, people talk about the dining plan, the ease of the dining plan. Yes. If you've got a card and you just walk up and exactly. say, this is what I want. Yeah. They're not going to try and fit that phone book under yeah. your door at the end of the day. <laughs> exactly. And then we had the specialty area. I'm <laughs> talking to you, barefoot. Oliver. So Barefoot, their private beach on Labadee had, um, a, we had, a, there was, for all sweet guests, there's a separate, you know, area for um, your special But they also do that, they also do the thing where they like, you have special exit off the ship. Yes. And they come and they get you and they you right. know, escort you so off then, the ship. Yeah, so let's talk about the disembarkation. I just want to go back one second. You were talking about making dining reservations. Oh, John yes. and I were not in star class. Right. What were we in? Steerage? I f yes, it felt like Sky. we were in the worst Sky class fest. ever. No, yeah. we're joking. You were certainly not in the class I was in. <laughs> we certainly were not. I and certainly we were wasn't. reminded of it every day. That's right. Every day. every day she walked by us and said, your service sucks. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm kidding. We never had any trouble getting the restaurants right. we wanted. Right. So it wasn't, I don't want to give the impression no. that that's and more I difficult. Once your Sky class, um, that level of suite you're not necessarily having to book ahead because between concierge and the ship, they're making sure you're getting what you want. So I don't think that was a big difference between star and class or star and sky. Really. Um, I think the only difference was Alan was taking care of it for us there's and we also, didn't have to make, and I don't make reservation in advance. I just, there's I also something to be said for uh, us being seasoned cruisers. <sighs> I don't know how to put this. There's a way you talk to people and yes. the way you interact with people. We've had people say to us, I, we couldn't get in Coastal Kitchen this entire cruise. And we would go upstairs and go, oh, we want to add two more people. Is that okay? And I think it's just because we were nice and asked politely and we were flexible in our times right. that this was okay to do. Right. So I, I think that has happen. a lot to do with yeah. it, our flexibility. We can go now. We can go an hour from now. We can go two hours from now. You tell me what works for you. Yeah. I think the more rigid you become, right. the more time, you more we're trouble also, you have fitting yeah, into a certain spot. And we're also too. For me, I'm the I'm all I'm a travel agent. I plan vacations all the time. So the fact that I didn't have to worry about this cruise and two weeks before some guy was emailing me a person, you know, well here I thought you could do this and like yeah I don't want that that and that and he was taking care of it. You had enough to worry was, about with the I group, did. right? I, yeah, it yeah. was a very busy cruise between our families and the group. These are work cruises it's for nice us. Nice to know that your family was taken care of. Exactly. And that. it was nice that he was taking care of me too. He was making sure the scheduling was taken care of. I didn't have to do that. So there were a lot of benefits. Um, Before you do disembarkation, yep. talk about the day you guys had food delivered to your room. Because this, to oh, me, was incredible. Oh, I forgot about that. So, oh, oh, I know. a great memory. This it actually really was a great memory. Um, I can now tell you what it really was. Um, we just At first, going into it, we thought we were going to have breakfast delivered to the suite every morning. Because you can actually, we were able to order from the Coastal Kitchen menu, not just the regular room service menu. And so, the first morning, we did that. And we were in the two-bedroom aqua theater suite, I said. And it has a very large veranda. And a ve outside is a very large table that sat the six of us. Just for those of who are listening, the Aqua Suite Theater is overlooks the Aqua Theater where yes. they have the shows at night. So you have you don't have to go down to right. the seating that's for everyone else exactly. on the ship. You have a balcony that overlooks us. And this was and one of the reasons this is a two bedroom suite. So we had a master suite that had the it was our master room, master bed bedroom and all of that, but our own 
bathroom. There was a second bathroom. There was a, a bedroom that would sleep four, but my parents slept in there for two. And then in the living room, there was a living room area as well um, with us another smaller table and a sofa and all of that. And that sofa also made a bed. So these will sleep eight. And you have to be a minimum of five to book them usually. If it's getting close to sailing and they haven't sold, sometimes they'll let them go. But typically you have to be a minimum of five to book this. Um, so just a little bit about the suites. And then it has this big outside area, which is mad, like with... Um, you're talking about cheese lounges. You're talking yes. about a regular table. You're talking right. about this table that sleeps that sit, sits six people. It was gigantic. Yeah. So that it's first huge. morning, I get everybody together with the menus. And I call down to Coastal Kitchen and I order. And they said, you know, it's going to be a bit... So the gentleman shows up with our food and he rolls in a big trolley and he comes and he goes out to our tent, tell him where I wanted to have breakfast. He goes out, he sets the table, he puts a tablecloth on it. He sets out the plate, sets settings for us, basically brings all of the food, sets it out. It's lovely. And this is where we had breakfast. And I, had, I had posted a picture on some of my social media. If you follow me on social media, I had posted a picture of all of us having breakfast that morning. And my mom, I just saw her yesterday, still talks about that breakfast it was just so relaxing in the you know the ocean and it was beautiful um we didn't end up doing it every day like we thought we would it was a lot more time consuming than my schedule allowed we were also um, very very busy we were very busy and we found that going to coastal kitchen was a nice experience as well um but that morning was incredible and this but we could have done this Every meal, if we wanted to, we could have had breakfast every day served like this. I could have had lunch and dinner if I wanted to. So that was definitely part a of what all sweet guests, I think, except probably now for Junior Sweet, you can order off of the specialty restaurants right. menu to be delivered to your room anyway. So you could have that yeah. brought up there we as could well. Have, and the fact that ours was compliment, like we weren't paying right. up charges, right? That's incredible. So you know, there are a lot of. I could do a whole show just talking about how much this worked for us um and just but i did forget one thing before i go disembarkation a gratuity for alan this was a question for us i know when you're staying concierge i'm sure you guys you would tip the concierge usually there's two people mm -hmm. um we had no interaction with them so that wasn't part of our radar as far as gratuity but now we have this genie that, you know and we thought how do we tip him so we did a lot of research ahead of time and there's not a lot out there because it's such a new service we talked to our group reps because they were actually friends with Alan. And we're like, okay, give me a ballpark. Like, I don't want to be too low. I don't, oh, he'll be happy with anything. No, he wouldn't. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Alan's going to be very, he will not be happy with anything. Um, and so it is, it is a tipped service. You get that feeling. Of course, it's a tipped service. I think for some people, they read the gratuities are included. And I would be willing to bet probably 40 to 50% of his guests don't tip at all. It would be my guess. Um, what we read, it seemed like everybody ranged from like $50 for each of us for the week up to $100. I think we ended up in the $75 to $100 range for each of us. So we're talking $400-ish, $400 to $500 for the week. Um, again, But Alan, you felt it was worth it. it was I also Alan messaged me if that was too low or too high. I, <laughs> I also <laughs> think... Cheap. <laughs> really. I also think that it depends on what you ask of someone. And that someone. was the way we were, what we were struggling with as well. We kind of went in with a baseline for us. What we knew that this was going to be something we paid. We went in with a baseline and thought how much or how little we thought this was useful. Like we've cruised Nor Norwegian and we had a butler with there. That guy was no Alan. Like there was no, like it was a very different experience. Oh, ours was a creep. Yeah. But uh, to Kevin's point, too, you know, we tipped the concierge. Some people tip them much more than we did. Right. Because it depends on how much they do for you. Exactly. So if, you, if you're doing uh, the genie service and this person is doing, I mean, I was looking at the frequently asked questions and there's things like private uh, shore excursions. Right. They can set up and all the stuff they can Cocktail do Cocktail you. parties in your room. In right. your room and stuff. So if and, they did that, right. I would tip him more. Than exactly. And that's kind of where we were at with it. Um we felt like every dime we gave him was earned earned and deserved. We felt like he, it was wonderful to have that one person, that one point of contact. Um, and also on this one, I have to say our stateroom attendant, she was amazing. I, I probably has something to do with the fact that we were in a suite. And as I said, I have, I don't normally do that. So maybe they're all amazing when you're in suites. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, they are. But um. I can tell you, this was my <laughs> best experience by far. She was lovely. And the same thing, really taking care of my parents Restored. and making sure that, and my mother-in-law, making sure that they were taken care of and they had everything they needed. Um, so we did give her a little bit extra as well. But 
please, if you're doing this level, factor the factor the cost of that gratuity gratuity into it because it's well earned it's well deserved i think i would have been a little higher had he done more he did do the the private tours for us but we were pretty low-key like except for him seeing us at dinner we really didn't bother him too much during the day we saw him more than you did did. i think so that's because he stood behind you (laughs) i just want to go back just a second i was joking when you said our all sweet uh i'm joking um I, i find with stateroom uh, the attendance. state room attendants. I my theory is if you tell them up front what you're looking for, exactly. they provide you the service that you ask for. If you don't give them any guidance, then they're going to do what they think you want. Right. If you, when you get on the ship, meet your state room attendant and kind of ask them for what you would like mm-hmm. and what you're expecting. However, again, John and I, I know we say this a lot, we're very low maintenance. Is there Diet Coke? <laughs> is yeah. the bed made? Is there ice? Is there ice? That's kind of yeah. what we asked yeah. for. So this was this was our experience, and I know we talked a little bit about price. Um, I don't think my price was reflective, just because I was grandfathered into the program. But just to give you an idea, I had a look um, at the end, the same week that we traveled last year. So I looked at December third of this year on the Oasis. And for five people in a two-bedroom aqua theater suite, the price was coming in somewhere around twelve thousand dollars. I know that sounds like a lot of money, and please don't think I'm not saying not that. Not for five people, it but doesn't for sound five valuable. people in an all-inclusive experience, um, this is something that I think you want as that special occasion. You want to splurge, and I'm talking for people like me who this isn't a normal occurrence. I know for some, a suite is a is part of the deal, but it's not for everybody. What and is for the? Me it's not. Do you know what the price of the beverage package is that you got off the top of your head? I don't off the top of my head, but if I had to guess, I would say somewhere in the range of seventy ish per person so just per night. Just add that because you're adding that eighteen percent gratuity on whatever that right. beverage package. Just add that yeah. to. Per person. So you're talking, let's say, four fifty for the length of a seven night cruise. Times five people. Times five. Yeah. And you're talking about people who there are people who would use there are much people. more than we. You I don't know that all of us together drink four hundred dollars worth. Right. Because we're not drinkers, but I love the fact that nobody had to worry about it. And let's say you're one of those people who enjoys the specialty restaurants as opposed yeah. to the main dining room. They're thirty to forty dollars a day. That's what I was getting to next. How much do you think you saved in specialty dining? Well, we did chops twice, and we did uh, Giovanni's. Um, and then the up charges, you know, we saved all that. We did uh, Johnny Rockets, which There's was six hundred dollars right there at the top yeah. of my head. That I'm Johnny thinking. Rockets, we did for lunch, um, so that was an, you know, an up charge we didn't. So pay. we're talking so far. We're talking in the twenty five hundred dollar range, just in the uh, just that, just the just specialty that. restaurant yeah. and the di- or the drink and package. And then you think um, internet was a big thing. Oh yeah. And you think internet there was five is. of us. There were. You know, some other cruise lines will offer perks like free internet, if you, but it's first and second guest. All five of us had unlimited internet. And the internet on the ship and it was, was as many devices. Was one it one device? device? One device per person. So, the, And we all got a card with our individual logins. Mm-hmm. So the beauty of it is my mom didn't have, because I need more than one device. I need a couple things. So here's what we once. did. I logged off and logged back on on different yeah, I devices. I just changed yeah. devices. It was, I just always find that like I always want my cell phone to be on all the time as a device um and then if i'm so i had to but that worked for me but again unlimited i mean internet there's another savings of Um, you know we could all communicate that way we've looked into booking that room we've thought about it thought about we travel with friends and we may all stay in one room it didn't feel like it would work for us i don't believe it would i think um i think it has to be family I think it has to be family. It really worked for us. My mother-in-law was all right on the sofa in the living room. So it really worked for us. In your situation, you know, and the friends that you want to travel, I don't think in that situation it would work. Especially when you're traveling with people who are each used to having their own suite. Exactly. Do you know well, what? We That's... share the three-bedroom in Hawaii. Right. The three-bedroom villa yes. at Alani. But, but it's three-bedroom hotel... with three bathrooms. Yes. Now, in this case, um, you know, some people would be sharing a bathroom because there's only two bathrooms. And, but keep in mind, for those of us who have stayed in inside staterooms, you know, where my parents slept, they've done a 12-night cruise in a room that big. Mm-hmm. And now they've got this whole suite. So I think it depends on your perspective and what your personal cruise history is, whether or not you could do that. Um, for us, it worked. I don't think, I will say, though, it was a, very, it was a far walk. To just really everywhere. Everywhere. Like you really thought about where you were going and what you needed to get there, like pack a bag in the morning. Like 
It was if a you're in the walk. middle of the ship, it's the exact back of the ship. It you is. can't go and any And there's further. a weird shape back there because mm-hmm. if you th- if you've ever seen the back of the Oasis, you know you kind of have it's almost like two wings back there. Or two apartment and buildings. And then it's open in the back, right? I felt uh, there were times where I felt the motion a little bit. You know, there was a couple rocky nights we had on that cruise. Well, it's kind of like I tell people think about a teeter Exactly. No, and I've been in the aft of a ship Lots of times, I actually like being there, but this felt like we were like aft, <laughs> like we were. We did have a couple of rocky nights. Yeah, so just you know, just some things to keep in mind on that. Now, let me quickly. I'll, I'll be really fast about the disembarkation. So now it's time to get off the ship. We don't put our luggage out the night before. The luggage stays with us, and that morning, somebody comes. They send a porter to the stateroom who gathers our stuff for us. So now you don't have that worrying about what am I leaving out, what am I not, what's going. It all stays with you till the morning. So then once... That's actually a nice thing. It is a nice thing. We pulled our own luggage this time. Right. And I have to tell you, although it, you know, we're pretty aware of what we have to leave in or leave in the room and put outside, it was very nice to have our stuff with us till the last minute. I I almost always pull my own luggage for that reason. I kind of just like having everything with me until the morning and figuring it out. Um... So it, got, it did stay with us. Somebody came to pick it up. Once he picked it up, we all went down. Our meeting place was Vintages. So star class suite, star class guests only would meet in Vintages for your departure. So we arranged ahead of time what time we wanted to leave. And um, Alan escorted us all off as individual families based on our times. So we just sat and then we had a little continental breakfast while we were waiting. And then when he was ready, he came and took us. Um, so it was nice again, not waiting for that elevator to pull your stuff out because he was taking care of all of that. Um, now leaving, you know how long these custom lines are again, it's excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And we're all walking behind him with our heads down. And then he literally, there's a special customs area while they do take regular people as well. Regular people, non-sweet guests. Regular people. <laughs> She's talking about you again, Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> they do take non-sweet guests, but it's kind of like a special area. And now when we get down, so our luggage is kind of there. So he gets a porter and says, okay, that's their luggage. Um, they're leaving now. So the porter comes and now we have to get in front of everybody. So people are yelling at him. People are yelling at us. And Alan just keeps saying, there's star class, there's star class. And people are saying, what's star class? And, who are they? <laughs> like, and we're just like, don't make eye contact. Just keep looking ahead. And people are waiting, bye, JC, thank you. And I'm like, yeah, just <laughs> Right. <laughs> right? Her clients are all calling exactly, after you. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so they literally, there was this massive line in the terminal. And it meant, like, we left the ship. I think it was around, I want to I wanna say it was 9 o'clock. At 9.20, we were in the car with all of our stuff pulling out of the parking garage. Wow. Now, I have to tell so, you that John and I, again, after doing this for quite a while, we are up the crack of dawn. Right. However, we live an hour from Port Canaveral. We also had other responsibilities. We were making sure our guests were getting right. on the buses, and we were, sure. you know, making sure that we but were in the, the right like place. I can tell you, this terminal, if you're leaving you know, 839, then you have to get, everybody knows the getting on and the getting off is not the fun part. Right. This service was, this had value for me. Mm. This had value for me, just not having that process. I and, think, I think too, Kevin talks about, you know, we know what we're doing and he and I travel a certain way. However, I think if we had people with us who didn't know how to cruise yeah. or a lot more luggage and a lot more right. people, this would be beneficial. Absolutely. Because it wouldn't, it wouldn't fall on our responsibility to say, where's your luggage? Where are you going? Well, that's, that's the thing. Okay. Well, you know, where's, where's my dad? Who's he talking to? <laughs> Stop talking. It's time to go. Get your bag. Where's your bag? Did you drop your bag? Like, you know, by the time I'm hurting my parents and, you know. Your parents, parents are lovely. They are They're absolutely really lovely. lovely. Love they are. Parents. And I tease them relentlessly, but they are lovely. But I feel very responsible for them. And they look to me. For that guidance, I think because I travel so much, and I think sometimes just because I'm a little overbearing, and they I was think just they gonna just say, I think it's because you're bossy, <laughs> right? So there's a little bit of that too. So it's just I didn't have to worry about any of that. You know, Alan was taking headcount. Somebody had our luggage. So just the fact that it was such a speedy process on and off, there's value there. Your father said something to me that was very funny, and it reminded me of something my father would say. Was the first night it was our meet and greet, and we sort of. Went off to the side a little bit, and he goes, Tracy always tells me how hard she works. This doesn't look like work to me. <laughs> <laughs> she would love to hear that. Let's go over and tell her Let's that. Let's go yeah, tell her now. We should go tell her right now, especially during that first day, right? right. Like, we're all, <laughs> I know. 
Yeah, I know. It's true. That's what parents do. That is. Excellent. So this was a wonderful experience. I agree. Like I said, whether you're a regular sweet guest and this is what you do, I also want to say, like, you know, I talked about the price for that fall. I've looked at Disney sweet prices and I look at my value. I can tell you that same week I was talking about at the end of next year on Disney, it's more. Oh my God, yeah. And it's a one bedroom. Not a two bedroom. Probably, I would say eighteen thousand. It was just under seventeen. Yep. For a one bedroom, not a two bedroom, because the two bedroom price is we're talking. Yeah. It has a two or a three in front of it, yep. um, and you don't have beverage packages, and you know Specialty dining packages, and you don't have an Allen, and you don't have, you have an Allen. You know, you don't have. So there's it, there's a lot of value there. There's a lot of value. Even up from our end. Now, we've looked at future cruises because we're always looking for a future cruise. I don't see a big price difference in a future owner suite because of this new service. Right. This new level of service. So I don't think it's added a lot to that level no. of our travel. A lot as in price. Correct. It doesn't add a lot of I see uh, what you mean. additional cost for things like Coastal Kitchen and the other right. new amenities that we get. Right. That's my favorite new perk. I agree. Great, great. Excellent, Tracy. Thank you so much. I know that this was uh, it was a hardship. It was a hardship for you to have time in the two-bedroom yeah, Aqua Theater Suite. But I have to tell oh, you, the humanity. <laughs> and I know, and I talk to a lot of people, and I know that we all talk about cost of cruising, and I've talked a lot about how I do it value wise and a lot of insides and a lot of ocean views this is something we'll still splurge on once in a while it's gonna be really hard going back to an insider ocean view i'll do it because i just i can't this is not reality for me to do this all the time but if you're looking for a special occasion if you're looking for you know a way to splurge i would consider this or if you're splitting the cost with family members, right if you're two families you know and you want to split the cost of something like this six thousand each yeah it's yeah. It's interesting. I agree. For a suite with all the extras, that's not a bad deal. Agreed. All right. Thank you very much, Tracy. Thank you guys for participating. Thank you, everybody at home, for listening and watching our show this week. We hope you have a great week, and we hope you have a great vacation. <laughs>